Hello everyone. My name is Oscar Tovar and I'm a backend engineer on the software composition analysis team here at GitLab. And today I'll be going over a, uh, the new dependency scanning experience on a multi-module Gradle project. Gradle project. Uh, so a little bit about uh, background context here. Uh, traditionally, to build Gradle project, uh, to scan Gradle projects, we would have to build the entire dependency graph, and we previously did this in Gymnasium Maven uh, by building this out through a plugin. Uh, the thing about this is that in order to run this plugin, we were doing this behind the scenes, and we had to maintain compatibility with a couple of different of runtimes and package manager versions. Uh, since there's different compatibilities with, within Gradle itself and Java. Uh, in the new dependency scanning analyzer, uh, we are no longer doing the builds, and instead we are parsing the files that are static, um, that are no longer, we don't, don't require any input on our end. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you how that works and the benefits of doing so. Uh, to go over this briefly, uh, I have this multi-module Gradle project set up here has a couple of modules within it and inside of this you also have the GitLab CI file that I have built. Um, at the moment this is intentionally not working um, but you'll see here that the build job that I have configured does work and what it's doing is it's first assembling the project by running Gradle assemble and after building the, uh, the pro assembling the project with Gradle assemble it's generating the lock file. Uh, that is generated via the Nebula plugin. Um, the Nebula Gradle Dependency Lock plugin, sorry. This plugin is very similar to the, does the same thing as uh, Bundler would inside of a RubyGems project. Um, so what it does is it takes all your dependencies and locks them down to uh, a specific version and then it recreates this in a way that you can view the dependency graph. So you can say that project A depends on project B and project B depends on project C, so on and so forth. Uh, this is very important because if you ever want to know why your depend why a specific vulnerable dependency, for example, is inside of your project, uh, it helps to know how you got to that dependency in the first place. Uh, so this is the this is the plugin here. And I have configured this project to have it enabled and since it's a multi-module project uh, it's been enabled for every single sub project here and we've also ensured that we have set to true the included uh, include transitives property here this will ensure that we are creating a lock file that includes not just the direct dependencies but the entire dependency graph and to give you a brief overview of how this looks You can take a look here at these um, dependencies.lock files that are here. Uh, and uh, whoop, actually, let me show you here. The lock file will looks very similar like this. It will show you the configuration that it's running under. So for example, it can be like a test. Uh, configuration or a compile or a class path configuration. It'll tell you the name of the dependency by group and artifact. And then it'll tell you as well uh, what was requested, uh, what are the transitive dependencies as well. So if you would like to know what, what dependencies that are, uh, which we do in our case, it will let you know that as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and fix this so it pulls down the correct analyzer image. And I just finished pushing this up, so we'll go ahead and refresh this. And as you can see, we, we triggered this build here. And it shouldn't take very long. Um, 
on this project it takes approximately like a minute or so to download the image and then run the tasks of generating the project uh, artifacts as, as well as the lock file artifacts. And while this is building, I'll go ahead and dive in a little bit further into the CI file itself. Uh, so the way this works is that uh, the plugin has two tasks for this. There's generate lock and save lock. The generate lock file uh, generates a lock file that's within the build directory. Uh, and this directory is usually ignored whenever you have a Gradle project. Uh, the save lock task what it does is it copies that lock file inside of the build directory. It copies it over into the project or the module root path. Um, what we're interested in is in the one that's at the root path because this gives us a much better indicator of where we're going to find the usage of these dependencies. Uh, so after we run these tasks, the last thing we do is we delete anything. We use find to delete anything that's inside of these build directories that has a dependencies.lock file. And then we take the remaining dependencies.lock files, which we are interested in, and we pass them on as artifacts. The dependency scanning job here runs in a second stage called test. And this ensures that we run after we build the project and after we uh, generate the artifacts. And then it takes the, anal the analyzer when it runs, it will go ahead and detect these dependencies.lock files. It will parse them for not just the direct and the indirect dependencies, but the relationships between them. And then it will generate an SBOM as well. So you can go ahead and double check here. And sure enough, the dependency scanning job uh, completed successfully. So as we can see, it went through and it inspected every single directory, not just the first one that I found. And if we'd like, we can also browse the some of the SBOMs that is generated. So for example, we can look at lab two here. And as we observe here, it's gonna list the area where I found it. So in this case, it was the input area, the input file path was in lab two dependencies.lock. So we know this is inside of the lab two project or module. Uh, it was detected as a Gradle project or module in this case. Um, and uh, we're able to see here that there is the find bugs uh, dependency, there's the error prone annotations dependency. Um, there's a couple of them up down here, but if we go further down, we can see that they, uh, we can also see the dependency. So for example, we can see that this API uh, guardian uh, dash API dependency depends on the Jupyter API, the Jupyter params and some other uh, dependencies down here. And if we go back into the dependency list here, we can see that the dependency list has also been generated. Uh, so we're now getting the location, which is in the day one dependencies.lock. We're also getting the Apache license.2.0 that it's running. Uh, so it's powering not just the dependency analysis, but also the license and uh, the license scanning portion of this. Um, and if we go back one more time, uh, we can see that this happened very quickly. Uh, since there's no more need for a build, this only took approximately 15 seconds. And the majority of this was spent on uh, downloading the image. So overall, um, we're very excited about this feature. Uh, it will empower a lot of things like multi-project and multi-module analysis and it will also speed up the, the analysis portion of it uh, of this of the jobs itself thank you